Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Sans Lectures. If you've not yet liked, subscribe and followed, please do so and make sure to deposit those comments in the comment section. Also, please include your questions, we shall be ready to answer. So last time we looked at the cell cycle and we said it is a series of events from one cell division to another. We saw the phases within the cell cycle. We said the cell cycle is made up of interphase and meta phase. And we said the cell cycle begins with G1. From G1 we go to S. From S we go to G2. Then from G2 we go to my prophase, meta phase, anaphase, then telophase. So that is basically for the cell cycle. And we say this is a highly regulated process. A highly regulated process because if it is not regulated, that is how we end up developing things like tumors or onkers. Tumors or onkers or what the issue called cancers. Cancers which are just uncontrolled cell division. So we are going to look at how the whole of this process is regulated and the regulation of this process involves various activities number one you involve various pathways various pathways number two you involve various proteins number three you involve various uh, genes what they call tumor suppressor genes tumor suppressor genes then it is also regulated by what we call cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases or they call CDKs. So we are going to look at each of these and see the roles they play in the regulation of the cell cycle. In fact we begin with the variance pathways. Now the pathways that regulate the cell cycle are of three to four types. Number one we have the G2 pathway Number two, we have the GS pathway. Number three, we have what they call the Jack Start pathway. The Jack Start pathway. And number four, we have what they call the MAPK pathway. The MAPK pathway. Or the mitogen activated protein kinase pathway. The MAPK pathway. We look, in our series of the membrane bound receptors, we looked at the G2. And we say, the, this is the, the G coupled protein receptor 2. So, the G coupled protein receptor, when we have binding of, let's say, a growth factor on the receptor, we are looking at G2. We say it will activate the cytosolic tail, then we shall have GDP, GDP being replaced by GTP, GDP being replaced by GTP, then the alpha unit of the G2 protein receptor shall uh, activate, shall interact with another molecule which we call phospholipase C. Then phospholipase C shall cleave a molecule PIP2 phosphatidyl by phosphate into two molecules. Number one is DAG, then number two is IP3. Then DAG Shall, act, shall interact with a kinase, in this case protein kinase C. Then this protein kinase C shall go on and activate various transcription factors within the nucleus. Then we have IP3, we say IP3 moves to the, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum where it will cause discharge of calcium ions. Then the calcium ions shall then react with another molecule called camodulin. Then camodulin forming the calcium camodulin complex. Camodulin complex that will also activate various transcription factors within the nucleus. Then number two, we also looked at the GS. And we say GS still the same pathway that whenever we have a receptor bind on the cell surface membrane, it shall activate the cytosolic tail. Then we shall have GT, GDP being replaced by GTP. After that, instead of having phosphoric phase, see in this case we shall have 
instead of having phospholipase in this case we shall have adenyl cyclase adenyl cyclase another molecule found within the cell surface membrane adenyl cyclase shall then get ATP remove two phosphates move two phosphates then we shall form cyclic adenine monophosphate which you call CAM then CAM shall react with a protein kinase A protein kinase A we say the protein kinase A has two units the regulator unit and the catalytic unit so CAM binds the regulator unit along with the catalytic unit for activate virus transcription factors that is it those are so, that is for GS and G2. Uh, apart from that, we shall have another pathway. Uh, this is called, we are going to look at the JAK pathway, the Janus kinase pathway. So, whenever we have a growth factor binding on the Janus kinase receptor, this is the Janus kinase receptor. So, we, whenever we have uh, a, a growth factor bind on the JAK receptor, the JAK receptor, the JAK receptor. When it binds here, it will activate, will activate the JAK kinase proteins or the Janus kinase enzymes, the Janus kinase enzymes, the Janus kinase enzymes are located here. Then these Janus kinase enzymes shall activate another molecule called STAT, the signal transducer activator of transcription, the signal transducer activator of transcription, which shall also go up phosphorylate other transcription factors to guide a cellular response. That is why it is called the JAK STAT pathway, because whenever the growth factor uh, binds to the JAK receptor, it shall activate the end product is activation of the starting protein signal transducer activator of transcription. So, lastly, another pathway that is involved is what they call the MAPK, the MAPK pathway. The mitogen activated protein kinase pathway. The map the MAPK pathway. And the MAPK pathway is controlled by what we call the RTK, the receptor tyrosine kinase. The receptor tyrosine kinase receptors. We looked at those in our series of cell communication and a membrane boundary receptors. If you don't yet watch that, please do so. But what happens is this that we say these things, these receptors exist as more no mass. But whenever we have binding of a of a mitogen, it will cause their dimerization. Dimerization that means they will come together. They will come together. They will dimerize together. They will dimerize and come together. Dimerize and come together. And say so their dimerization activates the kinase, the, the intracellular kinase. And we say the kin when the kinase is activated, they shall get phosphates and add them to the tyrosine proteins. What happens is this: we said that under when we are looking at RTKs, we say that they, these phosphates shall be added to other relay proteins. So in this case, our relay protein, the first relay protein that will come and pick the phosphates from the tyrosine molecules is CRB2, the CRB2 protein. Then the CRB2 protein shall activate another very, very important protein, which is the SOS, the son of seven lacy protein the SOS the sun of seven lens protein then this sun of seven lens protein shall get GTP and convert it into GDP 
Then the phosphate from here, remember there is a negative, there is a removal of the phosphate from here, shall be added to another molecule called RAS. Then RAS shall also get its phosphate and transfer it to another protein called RAF. Then RAF shall then tra transfer the protein to MAP K. MAP K. MAP K. Then this MAP K shall then go on phosphorating other transcription factors. I repeat, MAP K is nitrogen activated protein carnase. And in this case, it is. So after having looked at the various pathways, I want us to look at now at the various check points that are, that are involved within the cell cycle regulation. The first checkpoint we say is the G1 stroke S phase check point. S phase check point. So before the before the cell crosses to the S phase, it has to first make sure that it has enough nutrients, enough nutrients for DNA replication, enough nutrients of DNA replication. That is number one. Then number two, it has to make sure that there is no DNA damage. We don't want to replicate DNA that is already damaged. So it has to make sure that there is no DNA damage. So it has to make sure that it has grown to attain enough size, enough size in order to undergo the process of DNA replication. So that is what they call the G1 stroke S phase check point. When you read some other text, they will be calling it the G1 check point. They will say, then we then I say that the second check point is called the G2 stroke M phase check point. Stroke that M phase check point. So from remember during the S phase, we had our DNA already briefly. Get it down, the cell is preparing to enter the process of actually dividing. So this one, this checkpoint is aimed at finding out that there is no DNA damage, DNA damage, and there are no DNA errors, DNA errors. We have one measure that the DNA that was replicated was completely free of any damage. Then number two, there were no base pair uh, errors during the DNA re Application. Then we say the third check point is at meta phase, what they call the M phase check point. The M phase check point, phase check point. So the, the importance of this check point is to make sure that all, 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 uh, chrom all chromosomes, all chromosomes, all chromosomes. Are attached all chromosomes are attached to spindle fibers to spindle fibers or what they usually call micro tubules eh? micro tubules remember we said at metal phase that the chromosomes align themselves at the equatorial region on top of that the the kinetic core of the chromosomes attach themselves to the polar micro Tubules. So the essence of this checkpoint is to make sure that all chromosomes are attached to the spindle fibers or micro tubules for even distribution of our DNA. We looked at the various checkpoints. Next, you want us to look at the proteins. The proteins that are involved within the regulation of the cell cycle. The most important one is what they call the retinoblastoma protein. The retinoblastoma protein, the retinoblastoma protein. So, we've been talking of the various transcription factors. The major transcription factor within the cell cycle is called the E2F. The E2F transcription factor. And the E2, I'm assuming this is my DNA. This is my DNA. So, the E2F Transcription factor is usually bound to the DNA, then it is usually bound to the RB protein. This is my E2F. 
it is usually bound to the Rb protein. The ETF is usually bound to the Rb protein. And this Rb protein prevents excessive cell division, prevents excessive, prevents excessive cell division, prevents excessive cell division. How? Now this retinoblastoma protein is always bound to the ETF. It has to first release it free so that it can go uh, kickstart the process of DNA replication, which we know that is very essential for cell division. That means whenever the ETF is bound to the RRP protein, we shall have no process of cell division. And this protein is very important that if you have any mutation, you have any mutation, you have any mutation in RRP gene or the retinoblastoma gene. Is, it leads to development of various cancers, things like leukosoria, 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 or what they call retinoblastomysis, retinoblastomysis, retinoblastomysis. This is when you have excessive quality pupils within your eyes. Then it is also associated with bladder cancer bladder cancer and it is also associated with breast cancer with breast cancer so these are some of the conditions that you can evolve whenever you have mutations within the RRB gene which RRB gene is responsible for the manufacture of the retinoblastoma protein that prevents excessive cell division